All right, so I'm sitting here in my room doing some work, trying to be nice and productive. And you guys probably know that I've actually been on a cut recently somewhat. I'm down to about 230, a little bit over, but that's down about eight pounds or so since I started, which was probably a couple months ago. It's been very slow. A lot of you were concerned that I was losing weight too fast. Definitely is not the case. And I say that as evidenced by this little guy. So maybe you guys recognize this chair. It's the one I typically sit in at my desk. And I was doing work as I stated, and I leaned back, and this happened. Actually, you guys probably can't see shit here. I should really plan out these things before I do them. So let's see if we can make this happen. So there's the chair. And as you may or may not be able to tell, I'll, you know what? Okay, let's do a reenactment. So I'm sitting there, doing my work, being a good person, and being at my age, I wanted to stretch. So what did I do? Stretched, snap city, fell back. And now this is just awkward. What's going on everybody? So I'm back in the car outside of the gym. It looks like it's pretty busy, which sucks because it's right around noontime today and it's usually dead. I'm gonna go in and hit some deadlifts. It starts a new cycle of BBSM today, which is interesting because I gave Dan some feedback, telling him my hips, my legs have been really sore. I've had some trouble with recovery. We are gonna work on some things going forward with squats, but it's interesting because today, the first day of this new cycle, he has me doing an as many rep as possible set on deadlifts with I think 530 pounds. So there's not shit I can really say. I'm just gonna go in and do it and let's hope for the best. And if you don't see a clip after this, it's because I died. All right, so actually starting off with my buddy Steve here. He lives in Los Angeles, but is originally from Rhode Island. So whenever he's in town, he likes to come and train and he always wants to come and train deadlift. So that's exactly what he's doing. Now, before I get to show you his actual working set here of 370, I thought it was important just to show you where he's come from because he has made one hell of a transformation. So as I mentioned in the car, today started off with an AMRAP set and there's actually a lot of those sets today. So I'm sure he was in for a big surprise. And I really have to give him props for sticking tough only because he told me he just deadlifted on Tuesday and this was filmed on Friday. So that's definitely a lot of work on your lower back. So big props to him for sticking through this. And I kind of hesitate there only because I'm still miring those socks. I saw him when he was in the gym and the first thing I said to him was, are those Black Power Ranger socks? Hell yeah, they're Black Power Ranger socks. I definitely need to get me some of those and step up my sock game. Maybe go with the red or blue. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll go pink or yellow. You never know. But really good job by him again here with this 370. So that brings me onto my working set and I'm using 535. Again, the goal here is many reps as possible. And I was actually fairly happy with this considering the extreme amount of bitching I've been doing in all of these videos about my hips and my knees. I know, boo hoo, poor me. But I was really happy with this. I ended up getting six reps, which puts me at a projected max of about 627. And I probably could have grinded out one more, but it would have been a lot more uglier even than these last few were already. But 627 projected max is fine for me considering I pulled 630 a little while ago. So that's right where I want to be. Considering that, again, I've been feeling really weak lately because of my lower body. So although this isn't the prettiest of reps, it still goes up and getting it up is half the battle. Now, speaking of half the battle, the next set was supposed to be 560 at a block pull for as many reps as possible. And this was really tough. Here I'm using just about a four inch block. And after I did this and really felt how heavy it was, I went back and looked and saw that I was supposed to be doing a six inch pull. So that would have made this a lot better in my opinion. Two inches makes all the difference. Two penis jokes in a row, are you kidding me? Hell yeah. We then move on to Steve's set here of 320 and he kind of just knocks us out of the park. This looks way too easy for him in my opinion. Really solid getting down there and that's really somewhere where I have an issue with on these deficits is I really have to try my best not to make these just a stiff legged deadlift pull. So bending the knees and that just puts me in an awkward position being the tall lanky mofo that I am. So again, just really good form from him here, really good pulls and can't really ask much more of him from this. So you're seeing his deficits and not his block pulls only because I wasn't able to get that on film. But then we go with mine and 
I get pretty low considering what I just said. This is 455 again for as many reps as possible. So it's pretty tough. So three working sets of as many reps as possible. Pulls from the floor, pulls from a block, and then pulls from a deficit. Only got five reps here and they look fairly easy, but I was terribly fatigued at this point. So I was happy with what I got. And at that point now, I'm gonna kind of trail off because I'm distracted by the glute shot on the left. After that, we had a set that wasn't as many reps as possible. It was two sets of weighted chin-ups for six to eight reps. And in this case, I'm using 35 pounds, which is five pounds heavier than what I used last week. I'm trying to get full extension here, and I felt like these went pretty well. In fact, so well that I decided to go ahead and up the weight. And normally on these assistance exercises, I don't do that. But in this case, I bumped it up to 40 pounds and again, was able to get eight fairly decent reps. The last one is kind of a little bit of a grinder. Trying to get again full extension here and explode at the bottom using that brute belt, which I will do a review on at some point. I actually really like it. It's very comfortable, which is a really hard thing to say about most kind of dip belts or weighted belts like this. So from there, we moved on to bent over one arm rows called for three sets of 15. I'm using 95 pounds here. The pocket is out, the chalk's out. Pocket and chalk, I almost said cocks out. That would have been an interesting story. But for this, I wasn't really happy with it. You can tell I'm really fatigued only because all of my body English getting these rows up, it's basically like I'm trying to pull this dumbbell right into my crotch, which would never be a good thing. So I shouldn't be that excited or that animated for it. But three sets of 15 with 95 pounds. I did that for each set. Only showing you the first one here because there's not much else to see. But I did try to clean up my form a little bit after seeing this initially only because I wasn't happy with how much movement was really in place here. All right, so just got back from the gym. I'm gonna make myself some lunch. And we're gonna start here with just a sandwich. So I got my double protein bread. I gotta get my turkey out. Got my little scale. Watching some of my boy, Matty Fusaro, which just looks like Hungry Jack. And I got some paper towels and some cleaner out on the table because someone decided that they had to pee. Who peed? Who peed? Howard? Did you pee? Did you? You gonna lose all your gains? You gonna lose all them gains? Hey Howard, where's Mako at? Mako didn't pee in the house. Did ya? Did ya? Did ya? Did ya? Yeah, I know, you want attention now because you peed in the house and now you feel bad about it. Well, you should. You little rascal. You little meatballs. Who wants a sandwich? Who wants that sandwich? This dude wants a sandwich. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make myself some lunch. Probably a lot of meat because that's how I like my sandwiches. I'm a big fan of the meat if you know what I'm saying. But I'm gonna do that. I got some other stuff to do, so we'll check in with y'all later. All right, so I figured I'd go ahead and show you what I made. Might as well, it's really easy. It's very simplistic, but that's okay because I'm in a rush today. I got some other stuff to do. I have my sandwich here that I mentioned, two pieces of that protein bread, four and a half ounces of turkey, and some spicy ass mustard. And that's the best kind of mustard in my opinion. The mustard definitely can make the sandwich. I then have a big glass of chocolate milk. A lot of people like to drink this post-workout. I just like to have it because it tastes good, and that's pretty much what I base most of my food choices on. So pretty much the opposite of what Scooby says. I then have a banana, I have an apple, and I also have one singular string cheese. So I guess this is basically an adult version of a Lunchable. Not too far of a stretch, but I'm gonna eat it because I like it, and that's all that really matters. So I just wanna give a shout out to Bob from Olympus Iron. Now, typically I use this Optimum Nutrition Micronized Creatine on my off days, and I just noticed I was out, so I was worried that I wouldn't have any more creatine, but I realized the first time that I met Bob from Olympus Iron, he gave me this Micronized Creatine, and I thought it was funny enough to show. So first of all, thanks Bob for giving this to me, but this is made by, I think, Steve Reeves, and look at this, anytime that you have some creatine with yourself on the cover in cut off jean shorts or jorts, and by the way, wearing work boots, you know it's kind of anabolic in all kinds of different ways. All right, so I wanna show you guys one last thing as I picked up something recently today, and that is some glucosamine with chondroitin by the Now brand, and it's important to point out this because this is the sulfate version of glucosamine, which is important 
because what you want to avoid is glucosamine, HCI, or hydrochloride. Now, this is something that's a very touchy subject, and I mentioned this when I did one of my supplement videos showing you what I just have, which isn't a lot. And you guys know I've been dealing with a lot of knee issues, knee soreness, and there's not a lot of good information out there regarding these supplements in terms of actually helping with joint pain. Now, there is stuff that shows that it helps with knee osteoarthritis, However, it hasn't been shown to be proven to be beneficial for just people who have sore knees like myself. Now, that being the case, I've taken this in the past and I have found that it helps me personally and that more than likely is a placebo effect, but I'm completely fine with that. This that I picked up now, again, this Now brand, it cost me $20 and it's gonna last me about two months. So even if it doesn't technically do anything for me, rather than just give me peace of mind, I'm all right with that. Again, it's not expensive enough where I'm really worried about wasting money. So you guys can definitely read up more about that. Maybe we'll do a video on that just because it's something that a lot of people take, but again, it hasn't really been shown to be overly beneficial unless you have that osteoarthritis like I mentioned. So that's where we're gonna end the video. Let me know what you think about glucosamine in the comment section below. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.